Okay guys, I'm going to be comparing the following CPU coolers, the Corsair H70, uh, which is a low-end water cooling kit, pre-built, uh, and also the Noctua NHD14, which is a high-end air cooler. Um, and I'm also comparing both of those to one of my custom water cooling kits, which is a water box. Uh, now the reason I'm doing this is I do get a lot of questions surrounding cooling, water cooling, air cooling, pre-built kits, custom kits, all of that, you know, which way to go. Okay, so I'm also comparing both of those to a very, very high-end custom water cooling kit. And the reason I'm doing that is to show that if you're going to get any decent results out of uh, opting for water cooling, you need to go all out. You can't go halfway with cheap kits and cheap builds. Um, you're better off just building something with the amount of radiator space that it really actually needs, a decent pump. Um, you know, um, half inch tubing and quality parts. So, yeah, that's what this is. Now, all this system is going to be cooling is the CPU. So, I know it's total overkill, and really, I shouldn't even be comparing them uh, because this is like a thousand dollar kit. Um, this water cooling system, it's like even more than a grand. So, the only reason I'm doing it is to show that you know the possibilities. Um, you know what's actually possible when you build a custom kit there's really no limits and you don't have to spend that much um, but you can still get awesome results okay so specifications of the NHD 14 I'm just gonna not gonna read them out it'll take too long so quickly move the camera down you can pause it where you need to pause it if you want to read them all off so it's got all the specs of the fans and the heatsink so both of these CPU coolers are compatible with all the latest sockets so here's the specs of the H70 radiator specs fan specs 61 CFM at 31.5 decibels okay so here's the test bed that it's all going to be taking place on so it's a Core i7-2600K, Asus Sabertooth P67, 4GB of G-School Trident, 1600MHz, and SLR GTX 460s. That's about all you need to know. So, the H70 is up first. So I've got that installed now. You can see it looks pretty decent. Um, combined with the black cover that goes over the Sabertooth motherboard. Um, and that logo, that silver logo looks very nice, you know, it's a very, very high quality uh, build, even though, you know, it's just a, a cheap pre-built water cooling kit, the quality of it is, you know, typical Corsair quality. Um, but, you know, very small diameter tubing, uh, it's actually quite stiff, but, you know, you can bend it where it needs to go. Tiny little pump on top of the heatsink there, you know, that would be very much overheated by the CPU itself. The mounting mechanism is an absolute nightmare. It took me 20 to 30 minutes to get it installed because there's all these flimsy little clips and things to put in place. I really, really am not impressed with that mounting mechanism. So these two fans are running at 100% RPM, so they're as loud as they get. So I'll just give you a quick look at the radiator. So you've already read off that it's a 120 millimeter radiator. I don't think it said the fins per inch on the box. I'm pretty sure it's above 30 fins per inch. So dual Corsair fans in a push-pull configuration uh, and at maximum RPM so I'll just be quiet now so that you can hear the whine, the horrible whine of this thing. So that's up close and this is back where I am. So I pretty much can't hear any airflow. All I can hear is the whine of the fans. It really does sound horrible. It's, it's not the sort of noise I'd want to hear coming out of my system. Even in a case, that thing would still be loud. Obviously, you can turn the fans down um, with a fan controller or auto fan speed on the motherboard, uh, but then you're going to lose a lot of performance. 
Okay, so I've been running Prime 95 for 30 minutes at 4.6 gigahertz. Okay, so all you really need to know is that it's at 4.6 gigahertz, 1.35 volts. And load line calibration is on 100%. And Prime 95 has been running for 30 minutes. So there's the temperatures it's at right now. Um, they were the max temps. Okay, so that's pretty much it. Um, now we're going to move on to the oh yeah, we're going to move on to the NHD 14 next. Um, but I just need to say that this is actually the maximum overclock that the H70 was capable of. Okay, I tried 4.8 gigahertz and it failed. Um, you might get 4.7, but 4.8 gigahertz, 1.4 volts, it was getting up to 90 degrees Celsius. So I'm going to take each um, of the cooling systems that I've mentioned that, that I'm comparing to their maximum overclock. You know, just so you, you so you can see how far they're actually capable of going, and also the 4.6. So, with, so that we've got a, um, you know, something that we can compare them all to. Okay, so moving on to the NHD 14. Okay, so I've got the Noctua NHD 14 up on the test bed now. It's an amazing looking cooler. It's absolutely massive. Um, so it's got the two um, cooling towers, each with seat uh, six um, heat pipes running up the middle of them. So 12 heat pipes in total, six going off each side of the um, actual block that contacts the CPU, so the actual base of the heatsink. Um, the fins are aluminium, the heat pipes um, and the heat sink down the bottom that contacts the CPU is copper. It's all nickel plated. Um, there's a Noctua NFP12 on the front and a Noctua NFP14 in the middle. Um, I've already showed you the specifications of the fans and also the weight and dimensions of the cooler. Um, so I actually have to change the memory from the G Skill Trident modules to these Corsair modules. They're both similarly spec'd, um, both 1600 MHz, 4 gigabytes, uh, just slightly different timings, which is not going to make any difference, or well, certainly not much of a difference. Uh, so, yeah, I just wanted to show you the gap that you can get under there, and you can even raise the fan a little bit more. Um, but yeah, the quality of this cooler is just amazing. I mean, it just looks absolutely beautiful. There's no um, imperfections anywhere at all. Um, everything is just pretty much perfectly nice and uniform. Um, I guess some of those heat pipes are a little bit different in size at the top there, but who really cares about that? Um, both the cooling towers are identical. Um, they're uniform. They're the same on the back and the front. So I'm actually just going to show you the back here, upside down. Not sure logos. Yeah, I'm very impressed. Um, very easy to install. Um, took me 10 minutes. Um, and you know these are some of the best quality fans on the market and the quietest fans on the market so I've got these fans running at full RPM 100% so if you put these on auto fan speed control they'd go to absolutely inaudible because listen to this and now back where I am pretty much inaudible. I can't actually hear them over the background noise in this room. 
I can actually only just hear them if my head's about a meter away from them. Okay, so now Prime 95 has been running for about 30 minutes. Um, and it's the same same as before, the large FFT, um, FFTs, maximum heat. Um, so everything is the same as it was on the H70. Uh, I'm running the same profile, 4.6 gigahertz, 1.35 volts. Um, so I won't bother showing you any of that. So these are the current temperatures there after 30 minutes. And those are the maximum temperatures that it reached. Okay, so don't worry, I'm going to compare all the temperatures at the end. Um, so the NHD 14 also failed at 4.8 gigahertz. It went over 90 degrees Celsius. Um, so, so far seeing quite similar results to the H70, which is surprising. I, um, you know, other benchmarks that I've seen have shown this beating the H70, but these are my results. Um, you know, it's a different scenario, it's an individual scenario. Um, each scenario will get different results. Each system, each chip, you know, there's a lot of variables. Um, so these are just the results that I'm getting. Alright, so now I have the custom water box hooked up. So I've already given you a quick look at the water box earlier in this video. Um, so the water block is the EK, EK Supreme HF Nicola Seedle. It looks very nice with the um, Sabertooth P67. I'm very happy with it. So, um, now I'm going to read you out the results of each of these cooling systems at the 4.6 gigahertz profile that I ran them all at. So I'm just going to leave you looking at that. The Corsair H70 78.75 degrees Celsius. The Noctua NHD14 for, um, 81 degrees Celsius. Uh, and the water box 69.25 degrees Celsius. Now this is all these temperatures are taking into account different room temperatures at the time of testing and the temperatures are a maximum average of the four cores. So it's the maximum temperatures that the cores reached over a 30 minute period of running Prime 95. Okay, so I'm quite surprised that the H70 got a better result than the NHD 14. I did not expect that. Also, the water box, you know, 69.25, it's not a lot cooler than the NHD 14 or the H70, you know, it's only 10 or 11 degrees cooler than those, so it doesn't seem like much of a difference to you guys. Um, and is that 10 degree difference worth all that extra money building a custom water cooling system? Okay, well in this situation at 4.6 gigahertz with this particular configuration, maybe not. Maybe it's not worth those 10 degrees. But, right now, I am running at 5 gigahertz. Okay, completely untweaked. I'm running the core at, sorry, the CPU core voltage at 1.5 volts. So I could get that down quite a lot. And I could make this, um, I could optimize the 5 gigahertz clock that I'm running a lot more. Okay. This is after about 15 minutes. Um, and there you go. That's the temperatures that it's running at. So, that is the benefit of a custom water cooling kit. Overclocking potential. Okay. You can t um, overclock the hell of a lot further, still maintaining, you know, low temperatures. So, that's the difference right there. Alright guys, I think I've covered everything I wanted to. I hope you enjoyed the review and thanks for watching.